All right, so we're joined here by Aberdeen's captain, none other than Anthony Stewart. Anthony, firstly, thank you very much for your time. Really, really appreciate it. How are you and how is the family doing? Yeah, I'm very well, thanks. Um, appreciate the um, Zoom call. And yeah, looking forward to speak about myself, really. Yeah, and, and just to kick things off, you know, you were born and raised in London, is that correct? Yeah, born and raised in um, Brixton, London. Hmm. Uh, and yeah. in... Go ahead, yeah. No, sorry, go ahead. I was just saying, in terms of your Jamaican heritage, is it your mom's side, your dad's side, or both? Uh, both. They're both born in Jamaica. Nice, nice. And growing up, did you have the chance to, like, visit the island for holiday and stuff? Yeah, when I was young, I used to visit, like, every other year. Kind of stopped when I got to about 60, when I started taking football serious. I didn't have the opportunity to go back as often, but to be fair, my mum goes back and forth now and again, and my family do go back often. It's just I haven't been back for a while. Mm. You remember whereabouts on the island you would go and, and stay with family and stuff? Um, Clarendon, Maypen. Okay, nice. Central Jamaica. Now, yeah. in before you were able to get into Wickham's uh, youth system, was it? did you play any, any, any other sports growing up or it was just football all the way up for you? Nah, it was always football, nothing else but football. <laughs> okay, and, it, and were you always a defender? Were you always a centre-half or you played in other positions? I started off as a midfielder. Um, started off as a midfielder, playing for my school, playing for my Sunday league team at the time. And then when I got to the age of 15, it was kind of the decisive moment of I'll take it seriously or I'll leave it alone. And luckily the opportunity came to go to Wickham. And I went in for a six-week trial and never looked back since. Yeah, and in terms of that opportunity at Wickham, was it that you were scouted at secondary school or you were in a Sunday league team at the time? I was in the Sunday league team at secondary school at the same time and I got scouted at 15. So I was probably in year 10, 11 at the time. Yeah, 10. I was in year 10 at the time and the opportunity arised. I went on a six-week trial, done well, got my scholarship. But what probably gave me, what probably was the saving grace for me was my head teacher in school. So my head teacher knew that I always wanted to pursue football. So what she'd done, she gave me um, two days I was, allowed, I was allowed to go football two days a week and go to school three days a week. So I'd do Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, just doing the main subjects, maths, English, science. And then Thursday, Friday, Saturday, I'd be up in Wickham playing football. So it was a good opportunity for me. Wow. Yeah, very, very intriguing passage that you had. And I remember that debut that you had, you were probably 19 or 18 against Preston. Do you remember the yeah. feeling it was like, you know, coming on and, and, and playing in the football league? It was, it was never reckoned to be fair. I didn't know I was playing until I got in the changing room and he turned over the sheet. And I remember that like, spilling two bottles of water. I didn't know how to feel, how to be in the moment. But once I was on the pitch, everything passed my mind and it was go time. Yeah, and in terms of Wickham, how key was, you know, the club as a whole in terms of your development as a professional, really? Oh, Wickham's been everything for me. I know I'm not there no, there no more, but there was a vital part of my development. Um, the person I am, my morals, a lot of things that was learned off the pitch was as effective as I learned on the pitch. But it, it showed me a lot of things. I learned all my trades and learned how to just be a professional footballer at its finest. So it was good. And in terms of, you know, after Wickham, you you spent a season over in Cheshire at Crewe. You know, was it, a, you know, a different culture going up north, you know, up to Cheshire? Or, you know, because some players, but when they play for a team up in the north or in the south, they have different experiences and so on. So I just wanted to know what was your sort of experiences like at Crewe? To be fair, it was quite crazy because at the time, I probably shouldn't have left Wickham when I went to Crewe. Hmm. Um, it was a decision that was a bit beyond me, but at the same time, these things happen in football. And what I could say about Crew was Crew was a massive learning case, learning learning curve for me mentally. So I didn't play much football there. I didn't get to express myself how I wanted to. But at the same time, being away from the family, being away from my mom, like having to live by myself up there, and just becoming a man was a vital part of me kind of changing into a man. So as much as I didn't play enough football down there, it was good for me learning once. Mm -hmm. And in terms of you know coming back to to Wickham, is that something that you had in the back of the, your mind that you wanted to do or, you know, the opportunity came, the gaffer called you and, you know, they wanted you back? Yeah, it was it was a no-brainer, really. I shouldn't have left in the first place and I knew kind of that was home for me. So I knew I can go back there, be myself and play my best football. So I took the opportunity with two hands. 
Yeah. And you know the history of Wickham. I mean, you played there for many, many years as a player. For for them to reach that point, you know, come 2020 and, and you know, you're part of that team, beat Oxford United and saying Wickham are in the championship, you scoring. What was that feeling like to go through the ranks, League Two, <coughs> up to the championship? Uh, it was, I, I can't even put it into words. It was amazing because I've seen it grow from the bottom all the way through to the championship. For me to actually play a part, score a goal and win the game, it was just amazing in terms of where the club's come from, what their aspirations was, and the battle it took for us to get there was was amazing. And, you know, many people have different opinions about, you know, a, a former teammate of yours, Adebayo Akinfenwa. What was he like on the training ground and when he came to to, to Grafton and playing? Because many people might have different opinions about his size and strength and so on and so forth. You know what's actually crazy about the man? As much as he is who he is on the public line in terms of the strongest man, He's the most influential player I've ever met in terms of setting up people's mentality. He's a leader. Whether he's playing or not, he's encouraging to do the right things. He's always in early doing his gym. He's always staying late doing his gym. Like, he's a proper professional. So, as much as everyone loves his personality and how he is, the person he is and what he brings to the team itself is the greatest thing. Wow. And in terms of, you know, that season in particular where you finished third in the league and you and Gareth Ainsworth was a manager, you know, what would you say was that a key to the success of that team for, for promotion? The big thing about Wickham was the team togetherness. Mm. A massive part of like the team. The, the way the team bonds together, we spend time with families together and just the, just the things that you can't really buy in football. Money can't buy the connections you build. And that was the biggest thing of Wickham. That's what I think got us all our success at the time was how we was connected and the will we had to work for each other. Mm. And tell me about, you know, some of the experiences that you had with, you know, some fellow Jamaicans, you know, Marcus Bean, you know, he's represented the country before. And I know Rolanda Aaron was at the club at some point as well. Yeah, to be fair, I've got quite a few friends that actually play for Jamaica, which is quite weird. I have of Anthony Grant, um, Rolanda Aarons, um, Joel Grant. I played, I've played with all of them, to be fair. Marcus Bean, Gareth McCleary, um, family friend of Naren Osworthy. Yeah. Um, Ethan Pinnock, Daniel Johnson. Like, I know a lot of Jamaicans that play football, so it's always been a goal. But at the end of the day, I've just got to keep doing what i got to do and hopefully one day the call will come. Yeah, I mean, maybe you have, maybe you haven't. A lot of football fans compare you to Naira Nasworthy. Do you know why or do you understand why they would say that? I would say we built quite similar. Um, have the same sort of background in terms of where we come from. And yeah, he's just up to be fair. Now he knows where he achieved more than me in the game so far, but he's someone I respect to be fair. And tell me about the time that you had with, with Gareth McClary at Wickham as well, because he might be 35, 36, but he keeps himself in top shape all the time. Ah, uh, proper professional. Um, always in the gym, doing the bits, and he's still one of the fastest at the team. He always does the right things. And to be fair, to be fair to him, he doesn't probably have to play football right now, but the love. <laughs> And the fun he has doing it is what inspires others to want to continue to his age. Yeah, and did you also play with Tafari Moore as well, the left back? Yeah, I did play with Taf. Yeah, Taf came on loan when we were both quite young at the time. He was younger than me, but Taf came on loan for a season. Good player, to be fair. It's, it's quite weird to see where he's at now, but he was—he definitely was a good player. Yeah, and in terms of, you know, this opportunity now in Scotland, how did it come about? Because, as you know, not many people, you know, make that brave decision to go north or to go abroad so how did yeah. the opportunity come to to go up north to be fair I kind of set myself I set myself tasks mm -hmm. every season but the season before my task was promotion and not that to say that because we never got promotion is the reason I left because I just thought that I wanted to get back into the championship and to, obviously we fell short at the final day but at the same time I thought to myself that if I, I can probably stay at Wickham and be comfortable on my journey but at the same time when I retire, I want to look back and say, look, I challenged myself to do this. I've played here, I've played there. And also the opportunity to play in Europe is what kind of got me when Aberdeen came in. So it was massive for me. Yeah, and when you look at where, where Aberdeen are right now, third in the league, just a few points of second position, you know, confident that this team can go on to secure one of the European places at the end of the season? I'm confident, definitely confident. Um, we score a lot of goals um, and we are sitting third. It's still a long way to go, but from where the team was last season, the team was sitting 10th. 
we've bought in there's about 11 or 12 new signings so we're still bonding at the same time so I'm, I'm positive about this season we can we can put something special together yeah and in terms of you know one of your teammates as well you know what is it like around Shaden Morris as you know he also has Jamaican heritage as well Shaden Morris what is he like on the training ground and stuff fastest boy ever <laughs> <laughs> but he's fast as ever but at the same time he's young he's 20 or 21 so he's got a lot of learning to do and as long as he keeps learning I'm sure that he will go on to achieve great things. Yeah, and and in addition to that as well, you know, another player I wanted to ask you about, uh, what about Jaden as well? Jaden Richardson, what has he like been around the team as well? Oh, Jaden's good. He's he's an old man. Um, he's a lot. He acts a bit older than he is. He's he's another one that's twenty two, and the team is very young, and and they all can aspire to be great professionals if they continue doing the right things. But they got to start from now and learning and doing extras after training and doing the little things that probably people don't see. Yeah, and, and for you personally now as well, Anthony, your journey in football as well, you know, what would it mean for you to to one day get that um call up to, to represent Jamaica? It would mean a lot to me. I've been I've been wanting a call for ages. I got close, maybe it was just before COVID. There was a camp that was supposed to be going to Spain. I think Catalan was it. And I was in that I was in that provisional squad to go over and play the two I think it was two games we was gonna play over there. And then COVID cut it short and I didn't get to go. So ever since then, I've never been close again, but I'm still here waiting. I'm just doing what I've got to do in the meantime. Yeah, so the Jamaican FA reached out to you. It was just COVID that really hampered things, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. But in terms of a, a Jamaican passport, do you have that as yet? I don't. I, to be fair, when I was younger, I was applying for it. And then, mm. I don't know what happened at the time. I just kind of focused more on club football and I didn't apply for it, but... I don't think it's something hard I can do. I can do that if I if it needs be. Yeah, I mean, once you can find your parents' documents and, and head down to London, it should be fine. So, yeah, you know, yeah, Jamaican High Commission in London. So not too far from Brixton as well. So you're, London, you're, you're neck of the woods, so it should be okay. No problem. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And and I mean, in terms of, you know, <clears throat> the culture around Scotland, you know, the, everyone sees on the telly how passionate the fans are. Do you, were you reminded about, you know, the history of the club? You know, does that club has won trophies and also European titles as well? You know, Sir Alex Ferguson did some things there. Were you reminded of what this club means to the city as a whole? To be fair, as a club, I knew the achievements because obviously I'm, I'm a United fan, so I knew what Sir mm -hmm. Alex done down here. But at the same time, I didn't understand how passionate the Scottish fans are. So coming up here was a little eye-opener to know that when things are going bad, you're going to get a stick from left, right and centre. But at the same time, mentally, you've got to be strong to pull through. Yeah. And just a little bit about Jamaica as well. When you get the chance, do you have an, an opportunity to, to perhaps watch the national team play or even highlights of their games and stuff? Yeah, because I follow a lot of the boys on social media, like all the boys that, well, a few of the boys that play. I see like the highlights and the teams they play. Usually the games are quite late on that, so I don't get to catch them. But I do see the highlights and the goals. Yeah. And in terms of, you know, the Jamaicans that are in England, you know, whether Premier League, Championship, League One, do you get a chance to to catch up with them a bit uh, as well? Sorry, say that again? Uh, the, the Premier League players, the, the, play, the Jamaicans that play within England, Premier League, Championship, League yeah. League Two, you get a chance to to catch up with them as well, whether on the phone or in person and stuff? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, me and Daniel Johnson are probably clo are the closest. Me and, well, me, Daniel Johnson, Ethan Pennock, I'm close to them. Like, I can pick up the phone. And call them also close with Gregory. Anthony Grant's a close friend of mine. So I've, I've got quite good connections. Rolanda Aaron. So I could pick up the phone and call any of them. So it's good. I mean, like growing up when you were learning about football and stuff, was there a, a Jamaican player that you looked up to in a sense or that, that player that was an inspiration for your role model in a sense? To be fair, when I was young growing up, the only Jamaican player that I really look up to was Naren Oswald. So when he was captain for Jamaica, he used to have, like, obviously, because he was captain, he had, like, people coming over to interview him in Brixton. And I've been along to watch a few times when he's getting interviewed because always he was kind of my idol to say, look, like, when I grow up, I want to be more like him and represent Jamaica in the way he did. So I'll say now as well. And, you know, to see what he did for Jamaica, playing with Mariapa in defence for many, many years and, you know, solidifying the defence for Jamaica, I'm sure that must have been a, a moment that you really liked and appreciate to see how, how well he did for the country. 100% he represented to the fullest and Mariapa also is still that's he's still a Jamaican international now so now it's good to see and when you get a chance do you often you know check your phone and see the results of you know other Jamaicans that might be playing like Leon Bailey at Aston Villa or Antonio at West Ham do you like check your phone to see the results of those games just to see how the other Jamaicans are doing 
Hundred percent. I wouldn't say not so much Liam Bailey because I don't really follow him or anything like that on social media. But I follow um, Antonio. Antonio, and I kind of knew him from church when he was younger. So it's good. To see, it's good to see how far he's gone in his career and representing Jamaica as well. Small world, small world. Wow, look at that. So, uh, is he from Brixton as well, or just a different part of London? Uh, he was from. I think he's from South London, but I wouldn't say exactly Brixton. He's from like I think mm. Tooting, Tooting. Um, yeah, I think it's Tooting. He's from a Mitcham. Yeah. Okay. All right. In- interesting journey that y- you've had so far. And in-, in terms of, as you know, the World Cup is coming up. Um, will the Scottish Premiership go on a break f- during the time of the World Cup? Yeah, they get they get off for four weeks. So we've got two more games. We've got a game Tuesday and a game the following Saturday. And then we're off for a month. So it'll be time to regroup and have some rest time, really. Yeah, the reason why I asked that is, you know, if if you'd get a chance to like get time off, perhaps fly to Jamaica, sort out that passport, you know what I mean? If you get the mm. opportunity. I'd, I'd love to, to be fair. I would love to. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's see. Well, let's see. You know, let's see how, how things progress from there. 